Fair. The first ban was uh, one we talked about before we went on camera because we didn't want to share it with you guys. It's only for me and Sifa. <laughs> Elise ban versus <laughs> Gilius. No, I think we share it now. Now of we course, share it, that's true. A lot of priority placed on Gilius in the pick ban phase. Of course, taking usually these early game champs away or the Nidalee away. Or, or the Elise, rather, Nidalee, the right. early game champ that he really likes. Olaf also being banned away from Steve. I think no surprises there after those performances yesterday. And Schalke, I feel like with some targeted bans of their own. Vladimir, of course, very standard. But the Azir, that's the ninth special at this point it is. of the season. And I would like to see Trundle being banned as well from Schalke. I think like that's been Smitty J's best champion. I think Azir has been Knight's best champion. So I would really like to see those bans. Unless Schalke feel like they can kind of bait that Trundle first pick and then get two power picks like in Italy potentially in their first rotation because it is open with these bench giants does not want to risk a last pick Swain, uh, a pick that worked really well for Schalke yesterday against G2. Yeah, we saw. I see. We saw Fox get ahead and just start shutting perks down completely everywhere. I think didn't even die in that game. I believe six zero six is scoreline overall. Absolutely, one of those champions that when you give it a lead, it feels impossible to win a game against it. Definitely the thing about Swain and why so many people like him and so many people hate him because he's a snowball champion. Now, I was just about to say, if Schalke does not ban the Trundle, I'm almost guaranteeing, and now I'm putting myself out there, a NAR pick from, from, uh, from Steve against it because they know Trundle will be first pick for Smitty J. It is far and away his best pick in the top lane. And we talk about that triangle for Giants, Smitty J, Maxlaw, and Knight always doing well together for Giants when they, when they do win. Often it's because they have champions like Trundle who can snowball out of control and just take over the game like we saw yesterday from Smitty J. And what well, we saw it against OG last week as well. Smitty J, of course, overall, five games on this champion, three and two his record, but his last three games with Trundle have mm -hmm. all been wins for him. We saw him consistently being that split pushing threat, looks incredibly comfortable on this champion. I think an excellent comfort pick to prioritize, but the downside is that you're now leaving over some comfort on the side of Shalka as well. And I mean, we're, we'll see what they actually end up locking in. But they should. Definitely would be a smart choice here if they want to finalize this, and they will. Jin as well as the Nidalee locked in, so comfort for Gilius. And it feels like a little bit of a denial pick away from Sunstar as well, who had a phenomenal Jin performance yesterday. Yeah, obviously Sunstar likes to play Jin, but Rallis was kind of the first of the cool kids this split to really start bringing out a lot of Jin. Obviously, Reckless introduced the pick all the way back in Spring Split, but. Again, this is what Schalke have been doing. That's why they left the Trundle open to bait it as a first pick and then get the best available jungler for Gilius where he can have a lot of early game impact. And of course, this Jin pick. A lot of teams in Europe really value Jin now as like an ST80 carry. A lot of them were like debate, is it Caitlyn, is it Jin as like the most focused AD carry? Right here, Caitlyn is open, she's available. And they still value the Jin above it if you are Schalke right now. Really interesting. Maybe prioritizing the denial pick there, but there's also some pretty good makings of a poke composition already coming out from Shulka thus far. Of course, Nidalee Spears as well as the potential for that long-range engage mm -hmm. coming in for Jin. And we know they like to run these long-range compositions. When they've been playing Jin before, they always paired up with a mid laner who's very long-range poke. So we've seen a Zia with it. We've seen the Varos pick with it as well. She would actually work technically with fairly long-range damage from a Q to then set up a Jin snare. And also a bit more CC with her own little knockback. I don't think they're gonna lock it in specifically, but it is a pick we've seen over in the LPL as well from Rookie. Yeah. And uh, he played it extremely Insane. well. Insane. The best Dahlia we've seen thus far. Oh, for sure. Also, one the very of the few only, ones. Not the but only. Yes. But hey! I want to I jump in. There's the Nar. As the Nar does get locked in here, as we wait for Fox's pick, looking at the opposite side, looking at Giant's composition. First off, Freljord themed can approve of that. I <laughs> uh, can't imagine that's what they're going for or what they're building around here, but. Getting the Wait, is that not how you make comps right now? Because I know the probes love the law a lot. You know? They're like, <laughs> they're oh, like super into it. it. So Lissandra, Sidwani have to be the final two picks here for lore. And it would fit. That's a mid laner, <laughs> that's a jungler. They are both offer engage <laughs> against this poke comp from Schalke with the Jin with the Nidalee. You're supposed to pull me back when I try to go I'm into the lore. Saying, You're I not mean, supposed to follow me into the abyss that is lore references. They're obviously not going to, to pick that, but <laughs> it would technically fit as as a team comp. Like, Cassandra is a good pick, so. Yeah. But looking at this, they have, once again, kind of a more utility-focused AD carry for Sunstar, at least some utility options for that long-range engage. But now with the Gnar locked in, as well as the Thresh coming in for Sprottle, it seems like Schalke 
an interesting composition of their own. A lot of pick potential here. And how does the Gnar really fit into this equation? Uh, Gnar is mainly picked because he's a fantastic counter to Trundle up top lane. We talked about Lissandra, by the way, there. So close. Ah, this thing's on the blue theme, at least. <laughs> and then, ah, it kind of counts as well. This is why we don't talk about But yes, yes. So <laughs> Gnar, again, is mainly just a strong counter pick to Trundle. Oh. Gives you a winning lane. Up, up in the 1v1 and also is a very strong team fighter. And obviously when you run these Jin comps, very often it's like 1-4 compositions you build around it. Because you don't want to put Jin in the side lane too often. And you want to pair him with a mid lane who has long range damage himself to make sure Jin can then apply the W and you can kind of poke people away from towers. So he doesn't fit that well in 1-3-1 comps. He does really well in 1-4 comps and that's where now is your winning lane now on the top side versus the Trundle to stop the split push. Obviously, Giants is going for full-on split push with the Rise in one lane, Trundle in the other lane. This is, yeah, this is a really interesting adaptation coming in from them with the Rise pick, most likely for Knight in the mid lane, as well as the Hecarim jungle. We saw a G2 pull this out yesterday, and it really did not work out for them. What is, what is the theory behind Hecarim jungle? Why is this uh, even a priority for Giants? I mean, first of all, Hecarim jungle has been doing really well in scrims when we had Febivan uh, talking about it yesterday on the desk saying like this pick, oh sorry it was Perks saying it's done really well and that's why people are like picking it more and more but as a pick itself it offers engage, it's a tank as well, great clear speed once you get a few levels. Uh, he can be abused early which is where he can struggle a little bit but once he hits level 6, really really strong overall tank and if you are giants, you see what we are seeing and like oh is that a Jin in Italy? So that's a potential of a siege composition, well we need engage, Hecarim is engaged. Ash is engaged. Follow up from a Braum. Like, Giants are basically yeah. just drafting around the Follow fact they need to be able to engage on Shalik. Absolutely. Follow up from a Trundle as well with the Pillar. If sure. you do get a good engage, Rise with the Chain CC. Braum as well with that ultimate. So effective when someone has already been locked up. Great for that Chain CC. But the final pick now coming in from Shalka with these compositions is that Casio for Fox in the mid lane. Ops for the cleanse, smart choice, but this is a really interesting pick. Again, this is a pick that together with Jin, is extremely effective when you're sieging on towers. And that sounds weird, Cassiopeia sieging on towers. She's not like a poke champion, yeah. per se. But her new W, because it covers that massive area, you just put it next to the tower, and basically you can't step close to last hit minions anymore. Like, you can't wave clear anymore properly. If you step into that poison, you get Jin W straight away, and you just get poked and you're gone. Like, completely. So it actually works extremely well when you set up these zones around towers and objectives, and that's what Shalgar doing. Absolutely. Well, while we gear up for our game, take a second, head on over to Twitter, tweet at LOL Esports, hashtag GIA win, or hashtag S04 win, depending on who you think is going to come out on top. What do you think, Sifa? I am incredibly excited about a Hecarim and a Casio in the same game. That's what I think right now. Now, we have one problem here. Analysts were talking about having AC. I don't feel like we have the same here at the Costa Desk. I am at least <laughs> getting a little bit sweaty here. You're just, it's, you're, it's anticipation. You it know? is. You know this is about to be an action-packed game. How I'm can nervous. it not be? I'm nervous, you, you know. You just, you gotta take a breath. You gotta watch Giants aggressively invade. Sending in Hecarim first, who offers no CC. It's really uh, scary stuff. You want to send your Braum in first. Uh, just saying, I know in this case it didn't matter, but Please let Braum go first so you can apply the Q and then flash onto targets right after with, it, with exhaust and you guarantee almost the first spot every time. But uh, yeah, doesn't matter. Gold did not appear to be first blood there. Just trading vision here, maybe looking for the lane swap. Sure, but again, have it just as a potential bonus, right? Or maybe they just want to show Hecarim off, like look at my horse or something and he runs in and that's it. It is a new pick, it's exciting. It's been, it was new. Like a week ago, I'd say, was played different regions around the world. It's new to me. It's you new know? to you. It's like, it's like the used car mentality, yeah, right? It's fine, it's fine. I'll take it, I'll take it. But as we talked about, you know, Giants wanted to draft some hard engage, which is perfect for us. Because when compositions have hard engage, fights will always happen. Or they're going to completely fail the engage and we can laugh at that. So like we get <laughs> one of the two. <laughs> you're, a, you're a little cruel. No, uh, <laughs> not towards Giants, just overall just, professional just, League just, of Legends. Like, uh, we've seen a lot of Ash You're cool all, uh, like, not just to right. Giants, to everybody, right? Yeah, you're trying yeah. to let everyone know. Just everyone else. You're, you're just mean sometimes. It's, everyone not, else. it's nothing personal. Of course, lane swap, not actually going to come out. We are just going to have the reverse lanes, Australia lanes coming in here. Sunstar and Hustle and look at the matchup. Perfect, 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 but that is a fat trade. 
Well, I mean, I'm not gonna comment on the way they're trading in lane, but when it comes to the setups, you want the Gnar 1v1 on the bottom lane against Trundle, the range match him into the melee. Great for Gnar, can always just keep him away from you. And then top lane, you have this double range setup against the Braum. So definitely good for Schalke to get these standard lanes. Have to keep in mind, even though we have the bot lanes on top side, it doesn't actually change a whole lot for jungle pathing when it comes to ganking other lanes. Because mid lane, when you have a Cassiopeia, is always an option. Guys, he's just trading. Guys. So just we need to change that, you know? We need the crowd instead to yell like pastor names when they're saying something. That'd be super cool. I, I, someone will coordinate it. They'll yell Deficio for you. Oh! <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All right, that guy's my hero. That made my day. But we're focusing a little bit here on the bottom lane on the top side. I think the junglers, though, really have to be the center of attention because Hecarim, we have seen it played internationally, is newer to us. And Nidalee, while it is a standard pick, is one that Gilius, once again, the live or die mm -hmm. by Gilius mentality. What is he going to do with this in the early game? Can he get his team ahead? Because this is such an aggressive pick. Well, he's going to do this, Sifa, because right now, with the standard lanes, Schalke actually have pressure in every single lane, meaning you Nidalee can start invading in, be a little bit annoying, land a spear, set up a few wards, put a trap down, track the enemy jungler, and as we talked about in champs, like Hecarim in the very first few levels can be abused a bit, especially by Nidalee pick. So I want to see Gilius just continue, playing very aggressive after his first back. Oh. A little bit of uh, poking on top side, not a whole lot happening there, but you can see top lane here pushing in towards the tower. Mid lane, the Cassiop is still very strong in the early stages of the game, pushed in the rise. Bot lane, we know the Nar is going to do more than fine against Trundle, so Schalke technically don't need to be afraid in any of the lanes. I think it's a great place for them to be. We're going to have to see what they transition into. So often this means a huge CS advantage for the jungler or maybe a bit of deeper vision. You can see a little bit of vision placed on the top side by both teams. Giants trying to keep that jungle safe. And the Shaka in a similar boat just trying to make sure that this duo lane, Jin kind of vulnerable. You know, no escapes. Want to make sure. sure that there's not going to be any surprise appearances there. But you really want to hit level 6, you know, on Hecarim. Get level 6 on Ash as well. And then you can start really ganking this 2v2 lane like Thresh as well. He's great if you engage on the AD carry and he gets to step back and land on you. But if you just hit him, he's fairly squishy. He just dies, like, instantly. He does nothing then. So there are definitely easy targets for Giants once they get the ultis when we look at a 2v2. But for now, that's not going to be a thing. Instead... Oh, you can see on your screen, Smitty J's parents oh, are here, here to support. He's playing his best champs. His best champ. Like, this is the time to come and watch. So I think they, they picked an appropriate day. Maybe they made the pick and ban face. They're like, they're like first pick Tron listen, plays. we don't care what else happens. Put him on the best champ. Same thing happened yesterday, and he carried. Yeah. He was actually really, really good, and I prepared this phrase for him uh, in case he did really poorly, but he actually did really well, so I didn't get to use it. Good. Yeah. Good. But right now, in this matchup, he actually should be losing a lot, so maybe we can use yeah. it later. True. And, of course, 31 to 44, the CS differential. He's going to make up a lot of that under tower, but still at a pretty decent deficit early on. And Gilius is continuing to be kind of obnoxious here, putting in a little bit of deep revision. Hasn't gone for any plays quite yet, though. No, he's been playing it very safe, honestly. Just been kind of warding the jungle to find Max Law. But, again, you're not that afraid of the Hecarim just yet. Also, like Thresh, when Hecarim comes pre six and he charges towards him, you can actually just flay him and he won't manage to hit you and knock you back. Uh, just as a ways you can stop the ganks early on. But for now, again, not a whole lot is happening. Shalga winning slightly in like mid and, and bot lane in this case. And that's fine for them because if you are Shalga, you're actually kind of waiting for Ghostblade to be completed on Jin. And then you can start grouping together with the Cassiopeia and you can start forcing plays at dragons and towers. Look at that W, by the way, where every time it comes down, massive zone you cover. You can almost cover the entire river here. So if you are setting up for Dragon first, you put down the Cassiopeia W, it's very hard to run at her. And of course, the grounded effect from that ability is going to make it difficult as they push forward in the game, especially if Fox is a huge damage threat because if he can just hover on that range, stay away from the Rise, Rise isn't going to be able to flash in aggressively if he wants to, sure. as long as Fox is careful about setting up those zones of control. I do think uh, Thresh is a little bit of a weird choice here as a support pick if you want to criticize anything. Because right now as a champion, Thresh is only good if you're like an absolute monster on him. And if you manage to like snowball the game by creating picks. I want to see if that happens. Smitty J though, he's in trouble. Really is taking a bit of damage here in this exchange. Subjugate goes down. 
A lot of pressure onto the top side. Both teams opting to swap the lanes here. Shalka determined to get this tower first, but Giants are already collapsing on the bottom side. Fox goes in. Aggressive use of the ult. Knight taking a lot of damage. Just a quick trade of summoner spells there, or not summoner spells, cooldowns there. But I think uh, Giants, they managed to reach this tower a little bit earlier, already pushing it down. So yes, they lost Flash on Smitty J. Still getting a tower and can take a dragon right after if they want to, because it's so even in terms of how fast they're killing these towers. Can also just say, you know what, it's an Ocean Drake, we don't value it that high. And instead, just go back to our top lane. Make sure you always maximize the farm instead. But I think taking Dragon is good, so I like this choice. Ocean Drake in the early game is very powerful as well. So it's a good swap by Giants, because they managed to swap very quickly and then actually reach tower before Shalke did. So even with Smitty J losing Flash, which you can then argue, should he have been there in the first place? No, he shouldn't have. But but at the same time, they get they guarantee the TP coming out of Steve. I mean, it's traded for Smitty J's. But they're trading cooldowns across the map. They're trading towers evenly. And now they're getting the dragons as well. Feels like it's a pretty okay situation for Giants. Really, the only issue for them is some of these farm differentials, mostly in the bot lane right now, between that Jin and that Ash, 13 at this stage. And surprisingly, the top lane now evening out after that swap. Well, for now, uh, keep in mind, Steve is sitting with a wave right now, getting to push that out. Actually, we'll even out you right because it will push down towards Smitty J. So only the 80 carry is where we get a difference. But Giant's composition is, a is about playing the side lanes with Ryze and Trundle, where Shark is about grouping together with the four-man group, as we talk about so often. So whichever team is able to actually make the first move on the map, so like if Shark is able to get Ghostblade completed and first start grouping around mid lane, they can force Giants back and force them to not even split push for like one or two minutes because they just put pressure on towers. Things are getting... Ooh, okay. Nice flash out there. Oh, it's Lantern. That was... Terrible. Yeah, Lantern out. Flash in from Hustlin'. Pretty aggressive move there, but they're just looking to make picks. As you said, want to find that lead to really start this 1-3-1. But they saw Sprottle in the bot lane. I'm just going back on my screen to check. They actually saw him first. He then stepped into Ward. And he didn't stay way behind Rallis because he saw the Hecarim coming on the on the ward, and Hosting just went all in for it. Clearly not expecting Spraddle to still be there, losing the flash. But as you said, trying to create a pick. Yeah, looking to make else. something happen here at this stage of the game. Of course, Shaka's actually starting to build a decent gold lead on farm. Fox gets aggressive. Steve's on the back side. Boomerang blade in. Knight, can he trade this back? Doesn't look like it. First blood drops. Maxlor, is he next on the menu? Yep. Double kills. Back to back, picked up by Schalke. Steven, we just talked about how if Schalke gets the group first around the mid lane, they can really create some sick picks here. That was almost too easy because it was just a Cassiopeia ulti right in the face of Knight, and then Maxlaw was out of position, got caught as well. And suddenly two kills and a mid tower for Schalke. Massive goal lead at 10 minutes. And it was just 1k a second ago. It's moving up to almost three as they take that two ca the two kills and the two tower, the, the single tower there. Massive differential already. Game is just opened up for Shaka. But here, I mean, Knight needs to expect the ulti coming and then he has to like step back real quick. He gets stunned, so he goes down. And then Maxlaw at the same time, he has ulti right now. Sees the hook flying, doesn't use it. Gets caught and just dies. Like, keep in mind, Hecarim is extremely squishy at this point in the game. He doesn't even have Cinderhole completed yet. Yeah, just bits and pieces of the build here as well. And one of the big things is that Miasma not letting Ryze flash out. I love that name, by the way. Sounds Miasma. like you say Miasma every time. <laughs> My asthma. Mm -hmm. Of course, the ability name. Just keep just saying derail, it. Derail me, please. Oh, okay, no. Knight, he wants to derail. Rallis, he's going for it. Two buttons, snare locked down, but it's just going to be a trade of snares here. Knight really taking his time on this one. Not going to. Oh, Lantern! Man. Knight backs off, doesn't want to chase that kill down. I thought for sure Rallis was down. Oh. <laughs> Lands instantly. It's just blood across the map. Maxlor gonna make something happen. Good sidestep from Fox. In comes Gilius to back up his mid laner. Maxlor grounded briefly. Giants backing off. They're trying to make something happen though. They want to get back into this game. But right now, Shalke is mechanically outplaying Giants in all these small skirmishes. He always managed to either sidestep or have a guy nearby who can quickly join in. Know how to buy enough time. Sprattled twice now. Saved Mr. Rallis with the Lantern. In the right place at the right time. And now you have these first items completed. If you are Shalke, Morello is there, Ghostblade is there for Rallis. You can start grouping together with the four men like we saw before and really create some picks because Giants, they need this Rise to have full pressure in his side lane. Rise really shines in the mid game. He's actually not that insane in the late game anymore. 
because his damage is so hard to deal and you need so much time to deal with enough damage as a rise. Too many things can stop you and force your way, stop your entire rotation. So he's really good in the mid game. Give him Rod of Ages, give him his Zeros, give him Void Stuff, and he will be a monster. But mainly in the one we want, in the side, side lanes, and then if you can TP flank. Really looking probably to set up those flanks. They have the Hecarim, and the double TPs on their comp, and they're looking to secure this Rift Herald for Smitty J on the top side. Talk about how frustrating that Gnar versus Trundle matchup can be with the range advantage. Rift Herald will help out a decent amount here. And it's really just a question of will this alleviate a lot of the pressure that is currently in the top lane for Shao? I mean, it will make us a bit easier for Smitty J, but the problem for him is he can never really get close to Steve in Mini Gnar. So it won't really save him like that. Instead, Shalk is setting up a pick on bottom side. Uh, Knight, he's going for Knight. another one. He took the bait. He's going to get locked up. Sure to fall here. Mid laner for Giants not having a good game as Schalke read him like a book. It's again because Schalke have this goal lead, have this advantage on the map, so they can always be proactive. They're always the ones setting up the place. Knight steps oh, just honestly near the river, and it's like, yeah, you're now overextended. We're gonna go gank you because you're top laner. It's not really a threat for us because we have Nar. You are mid lane. Well, we don't care about that at the moment. Easy, easy setup for Schalke full control in this game. Funny enough, the same thing that happened yesterday for Giants. First game against Vitality, they just fell apart. Lost in 26 minutes. And this is something that we, I talked to Maxlor about yesterday. Is, is Wait for it, Steve. Oh. Arrow oh. is going to connect on Rawless. Maybe looking for the fight. Maxlor over the wall. Jin all alone, but the exhaust is going to go down. Sunstar locked up. Steve out of nowhere. Meganar's on the way, folks. He's going to try to make more happen. Giants trade one back. Curtain call, not going to be a death sentence for anyone, canceled out, but smack from Steve comes in, locking them down, Knight tries to make the hero play, a beautiful hook will not save the life of Sprottle, but a quick triple for Rawlaz in the end. That was such a close fight though, low members everywhere, Sprottle as well with the hero hook just in the end on Knight, otherwise I think Rawlaz would have gone down as well, looked very close, but Giants, while they find a good engage on Mr. Rawlaz, the follow-up just wasn't there. This Hecarim pick, it just needs more time. You need to be extremely farmed on Hecarim to be impactful. And right now, Maxlaw has been taken down twice. He only has again a Cinder Hole completed, so he's honestly squishy still. And it's really difficult for him to sit in that back line and buy enough time. At this stage of the game, there's nearly a 2k gold difference between the jungles. 2-1 and 2, the score for Gilius, in addition to that massive CS differential. So things just are really rough. And as we look at this fight one more time, you can see where it goes wrong for Giants. Yeah, so Arrow straight on Rallus. He's obviously behind both Gilius and Spratlus, so Maxlo dives in, but then it's now him against three members. And he's not tanky enough to buy enough time here, so he goes down. And while Spratlus and Rallus are low, Smitty J gets played back and then a great stun from Steve kind of saving the day and look at the hook here from Sprattle. A little bit lucky, time straight into the flash but another small victory for Schalke in the fight granting a bigger victory Absolutely. heading gold. Almost 6k ahead now as they start to dive into this mid lane. They put Knight so far down already and they're just looking to keep that train rolling. Skill shots flying under that tower. Giants will get a top tower, but that's about it right now. We see Schalke always try and group around mid lane. They keep pushing the bottom lane with Sprattle and Rallus, and then they move to mid. They move in to always join the Cassiope OP and start setting up the zone control with the W, create some picks. Giants with a good little rotation, just no minions at this point. And Rallus is looking to push out one more wave, and then he can either join the team in mid lane, or if Schalke can push out mid, they can actually join him, him on the bottom side. But you always need two lanes next to each other to push at the same time, otherwise you can't. And look at this Deficio. They have to send Trundle down to respond, and Rallus is completely aware because Schalke owned that side of oh, the yeah. Giants' jungle. Vision everywhere. Gilius running down to that bottom lane, ready to support. Schalke definitely taking control of the map. Sadly for them, no dragon to take at the moment, so you gotta start sieging on tier 2 towers very early in the game. No TPs for Giants, so no real threat of being flanked if you are Shalka. And as you just said, you know, keep that vision in the jungle, you can see the Hecarim coming. And you can also often spot the arrow if it flies from one lane to another, because you see it on the wards. Max Lawyer, I don't think having Not a great game. Be. Just gonna have to try to run this one out. Knight, ready for the turnaround if necessary, but... Just taking so much damage overall. Shalka set up for a siege in the mid lane. And you see this again, the W from Cassiopeia. Oh, that's the gonna be a that's quick pick. Okay. I could have even played play-by-played that one. I mean, 
He died. He died. That was about all. I, I he mean, did. Ideally, that was pretty much the only amount of time I had to say anything in that exchange. Very quick pick for Shalka. Now they have control in the jungle. They have control of the minion waves, and they're looking to break this tier two tower. Fox on the side, ready to go in if necessary. Giants, I don't know if they can do anything here. No, I have to give up the tower. And the two things I really like, see, well, there's a lot of things I like, but the two things in this game I really like. When you pick Gnar into Trundle, I think it's always great because at best you go even and farm, and then you go into team fights in the big game, and you're very strong on the Gnar. And I like to see Rylas play Jin. Because I think whenever Shalke is playing Jin, they understand how to build comps around it, and they understand how to move the Jin around, and he's very, very good at landing these long-range skill shots. Like, Rylas is Mr. Consistent. He's always been. He's never been the massive carry who goes 20-0 every game, but he always had a solid game. And when you play Jin, and you have the ability to just set up these picks with your team, because you're good with skill shots, well, you suddenly sit as 3-0-3, 18 minutes into the game, and your team has a massive gold lead. And this is one of the interesting things, is I really like, as you said, this sets up for Raw is to be Mr. Consistent, but it also helps Gilius be consistent, which has been that huge point that we talked about at the start of the game, because Nidalee, much easier for her to get those kills when she has the snare follow up across the map. We've seen Gilius be a massive threat in a lot of those bot lane exchanges, and really just a, feels like a much better team effort coming in from Shalka this time around. And exactly as we talked about before the game, we have a situation here where Gilius has not tried to be a hero on his own. He's been following Shalke around. He's been joining with Rallis and Spratl multiple times to create picks. And he's been getting his kills in team fights or that one gank in the bottom lane. He's not been like invading and solo killing Max Law. He actually played it very safe. He was like running around river, just warding in the entrance, and then he just backed away. So he played right now a game where you would say it's not because he feels they're winning, but he's always helping. He's always there. He's assisting his team. He's making sure Rallis can always farm, oh, and Sprottle's gonna come. Sprottle, Chain CC comes in. Sprottle's gonna drop. Giants picking up their first kill, but the fight's not over. Steve into the back line. Meganar on the way. Smacks Spinny J into the wall. Fox burns down one member. The 2v1 for the mid laner, and Shalka just ripping through Spinny J on the back half. Rallis, so much damage. Sawstar, what are you doing? Burns down. Is that another ace coming in for Shalka and a triple for Fox? I mean, this fight. Looked so good for Giants at first. Managed to create a quick pick on Spraddle, and Knight even got a great flank. And then Shalka turns it around completely. Gilius even managed to win the 1v1 duel like at the red buff after. This is a 20 minute Baron. I think this is the earliest Baron we have seen in the EULCS this split. It literally just spawned. 11 seconds, the Baron was alive. 11 seconds. Shalka absolutely in control, and Giants' best efforts to start the fight there did not work out for them at all. And when we get to look at that in a second, I think the biggest issue is what do Giants do to come back now? We'll check that team fight. Oh, definitely big issues, that's for sure. So, picks right on Sprattle, Gilles being a proper teammate here, jumping to the side. And now look at the flank from Knight. This is actually great. This is what you want to do on this rise. He gets to stand here with two squishy members in the back, but so does Fox down the bottom lane here, on the bottom side of your screen. And in the end, he can just play 1v3 and win it and start flash straight into the wall. One of the issues is Mini J. Yep, I agree on that one. Fix the hair. I, I agree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> interesting interesting reaction. Got it. Yeah. Uh, well, we lost the fight, but the my thing, hair looks pretty good. The thing I wanted to point out is that you just saw Ash completely zoned out of the fight after the arrow from a single Miasma coming from Fox. Just Miasma? <laughs> Had to do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. From a single W, how about that? <laughs> I like it. If unless you have some interesting keybinds there to fish you. Just zones out that member of the fight, and then it's a support trying to duel the mid laner, and it just does not work out. Yeah, you want to know, see if that's the biggest disadvantage about it being a pro player, uh, for current pro players and former pro players, you actually don't learn the spell names. Because everyone just goes like QWER. That's everything. Whenever the players are here I, talking, they're like, yeah, this uh, ability, you know, her Q is really strong, and like they never know the name. Are you under the illusion that anyone who plays this game actively goes, guys, I have Enchanted Crystal Arrow available for the next no, fight? No, <laughs> but I know quite a few play-by-play casters. Yeah, but we like, that's like a I thing know, we I... learn. Like, 
I didn't go. Oh, I yes. should learn all the names, but I like Q W E R. It's just Some of the names are awesome. That's one of the thing I like about learning the name. But sometimes you just gotta say Q W E R. Is the R lands here? Hustling goes in. Sprottle once again. The sacrificial lamb. Flashing to safety. CC coming in from Fox. Maxwell doing his best to zone. Once again, though, a support drops. Gilius suddenly in the back line. Steve running forward. No Megan R available, but he does so much damage. Pop! Oh. My God! Double kill coming in for Rawlez. Snare to back it up. He's the man of the hour. And Giants set to fall once again. Sonstar not even going to get the return kill. Schalke controlling the pace as they look to break the inhibitor line. Such a good game, Steve, from Schalke every single time. Multiple members showing up. Here the Cassiopeia pick. Great ulties even from the early game. 22 minutes in, they're pushing for next turns. Looking maybe to end this game. Hustling doing what he can to defend. Steve jumps forward it's aggressively. Early. 22 minutes in, Rawlez burning through the towers. I think they gotta run. Sansar takes so much damage from that spear, but Shalka backing off. Have to be happy though. Get the fight, get the dive. We have to watch it one more time. Giant's still trying to make things happen. And this, you know, it all looks a bit fancy. You hide behind the wall, you find an arrow. But the problem is you're running five members straight at a Cassiopeia now. And your comp needs to flank to win these. But again, obviously we are in a situation where Giants are really far behind. So these fights will never go exactly the way they want them to go. And Rallis with some great snipes in the end. And rest of Schalke diving in, getting the kills. And that's the thing for Giants, right? They would have loved to play split push in this game. They would have absolutely loved to put Rise in that side lane. But they tried. They were already behind when they did it. He got ganked and died. So they basically said, you know what, boys? We can only fight our way back. We have to just pick some crazy team fights, try and outplay Schalke. If we fail, well, we, we would have lost anyway. Once you fell behind and you messed up in the early game, Giants in this composition, like when you play Rise, he is so bad when he's behind. You just have to try almost, yeah. and that's what they've been doing, and that's why it looks even worse. And Radas now eats the arrow. No follow-up gonna come in here from Giants. Not in range for that one. Mini J locked down, potentially in trouble. Curtain call hits one, hustling. Body blocks for the team, but Knight's on the side. He's dueling the mid laner. Fox looking for the 1v1. Oh my god, the Casio damage is insane. Steve, he's gonna miss the ult. Smitty J flashes to safety. Exhaust drops. Cleanse in from Fox. Smitty going to fall. Fox playing cleanup. Rawl is suddenly available. Saves the crit for style points. His Thresh is gonna pick up that one and hustling. Tail between his legs, just has to run back to base. Shortest game this season was 25 minutes. Fnatic Unicorns of Love. Well, they gotta hurry then. Schalke maybe looking to set some records here. Was it 25 minutes exactly? Oh, I don't know that specifically. Because that's the, 20, the big one here. 25.05. 25. All right, 10 seconds. Ah, they're going to do it. They, they got, can do they it. They got time. Let's see. Schalke on the way to close out this game. Fox taking a bit of damage here. But at the end of the day, the game will end. And the fastest game of the 2016 summer season now belongs to Schalke with that commanding win. Ah, quick day at the office, see if it seems, if Schalke and can now, do this. We saw an 80-minute game yesterday. No one's having it today. No, no, no. Schalke is making up for what happened yesterday between Fnatic and Origin. Game one, though, and again, I just want to say this happened yesterday in Giants vs. Vitality. The first game was 26 minutes. It was even for like five minutes. Mistake, Vitality completely snowballed out of control, yeah. Giants fell apart. They came back in the second game, and both Pulse and I, who were casting the game, were kind of like, ooh, they got stumped. Like, Vitality should be able to win that next game and show they're a better team. But then Giants came back, changed up the pick and man phase, and played much, much better. So I don't want to count them out, but Schalke had a great game here and were way better than Giants. And I don't think we can count them out at all. What I want to see is more adaptation, as you said, coming in in pick yes. bans. And we saw them hover the Lissandra for night, and that has been an insanely good pick for Giants in the past. And while it may not have the most comfortable laning phase, while it may give up a little bit of pressure against that Cassio, who's just so terrifying, I, I still feel like it is the right pick for this team in that scenario because hmm. Rise hasn't worked out, Karma hasn't worked out, and with the zero off the table, I feel like you need something that you know is going to be successful. But I think if you pick Lissandra in this game, uh, compared to what Ryze wants to do, it's actually a lot of the same. You want to sit in that side lane in the mid game and push up and then have that TP. Either you TP flank yourself or people play around your lane and move to your lane and you dive, whoever is standing there defending. That would have been exactly the same with the Lissandra. You just have better engage, obviously, against the Pokecom. So that, that would have been something. But Giants... Made the mistake in the mid game, or sorry, in the mid lane, where they gave up the two kills with the first spot at 10 minutes. Yeah. 
And we talked so much about how Schalke, if they manage to group first before Schalke sets up the split push. I feel like you said it a minute before it had, like you said and it, then and it then happened. a minute later they dive the mid lane and the game just spiraled out of exactly. control. Exactly, because then you get the picks, you take the first tower, we see the, the play here by the way, I think Knight is playing a little bit too greedy here, you gotta always be ready for that cast appear ulti, otherwise don't take the trade. And then the problem is Max Law kind of continues in and doesn't really respect yeah. the catch potential. And now that's two kills and a mid tower, suddenly meaning that you can't set up your sidelines anymore. It's yeah, and the second you're behind like that, you talked about it, the 1-3-1 comp really struggles. Rise really they always struggles. struggle from behind. Always. And then from here, now that Schalke control the pace of the game, it feels like they get to fight fights on their own yep. terms time and time again. We saw multiple aces over the course of this game, but this first one coming in for Mr. Rawls was insane. Managing to pull out that triple kill. So we're going to watch it here. You saw the team on your screen feeling pretty happy after that game one. You're going to see why on your screen. Rawls, exhaust comes in, and he's just able to rip through. Yeah, obviously Exhaust and then Max Law is in the back line. Everyone else is trying to fight against the rest of Schalke in the front. And Steve gets his Mega at a perfect timing. Some small details here, you know, very close to more members going down. But then you get a hook like this one from Spraddle where it's actually <laughs> at the current location. And no, then no, no, Knight no. Mad flashes and still gets Every time. Aha, of course, yeah, he's like, oh, he's going to flash right here. And then I'm just going to time the hook, even though it's actually flying like this. The animation of hook is a little bit weird. Yeah, if you, you flash a bit point more. blank in front of Thresh, that... It will that catch you. It gonna, will catch yeah, you. It's, it's going to get yeah. you. Let's just say he mad lifed it. And, uh, he got Give him it. the benefit of the doubt. I mean, yeah. they had such a good game, right? Spraddle lifed it. Spraddle lifed What is the spraddle life? When you time the, the flashes and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> now <laughs> it is. Hashtag ask a spraddle. <laughs> <laughs> now it is. But man, Schalke, I mean, I got to go back to Agilia's point because we were so brilliant. We came up with that point before. When he doesn't have to solo carry, the team does really well. And he didn't have to solo carry. Yeah. Of course, while we've been talking over here on EULCS1, action has been happening on EULCS2. Rocket and Fnatic are locked in an incredibly tight battle.